sido es doctora Anunciación Totas, eh, Plantar Facetis is the, the most common cause of uh, Calcanian uh, uh, Hillsborough. I cannot pass my presentation. Let me see why I cannot. Just press Just... the siguiente. 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 Ah, siguiente. Just press here in siguiente. Siguiente. T Ay, tienes un, tienes sí, abierta tengo. una tienes abierta una ventana blanca que dices y el primer ítem es siguiente ahí. Sí, 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 sí. A ver. I cannot give to the next slide. Sorry. Siguiente. I don't, I don't know why I cannot uh, give it to my next slide. I will try it again. Control remoto. Uso de trata, Sorry. Eh, trata de salir de la presentación y vuelve a entrar, Karin. Vale. Uh, es que no sé por qué no me da... Karin, lo que puede hacer... Lo que puede pasar es que no estés compartiendo la, el, el, la pantalla que quieres, o sea, el archivo que quieres, de repente estás compartiendo otro. Sal y vuelve a entrar para compartir la pantalla. Vamos a ver, el uso compartido. Ah, compartido. Ah, el uso compartido de pantalla. A ver, es que mi ratón deja de compartir. Now I, I'm sharing it again, ¿ok? Compartir pantalla. Y ya no toques más, eh, eh, y ya solamente avanza con la flecha. Una vez que compartas pantalla, avanza con la flecha, pero te vale. todavía no compartes. O sea, no doy a compartir. Que comparte, comparte la, la pantalla, como antes, exactamente vale. igual. Vale. Ahí está. Ahora ya está. Perfecto. Okay. Bueno, avanza con la flecha. A ver si puedes avanzar, no con el mouse. Okay. No. Thank you very Ahí. much. Now we are. Perfect. Uh, sorry, I have no conflict of interest, of course. So the definition of plantar fasciitis is the most common cause of acquired subcarcanal heel pain. It's had a prevalence of 10% over the world's uh, population. And we have principal risk factor, intrinsic risk factors, and extrinsic risk factors. The intrinsic risk factors are related to anatomic risk factors like pes planus, cavus overpronated, excessive lateral tibial torsion, metaversion, overpronation, and of course, overweight. Functional risks to do with tightness or weakness of gastrocnemius soleus and foot muscles and degenerative risk with aging of the heel fat pad atrophy and stiffness of the plantar fascia. Extrinsic factors is to do with overuse, incorrect training, inadequate footwear. So uh, we have pain with the first steps in the morning or after prolonged sitting. It's a sharp pain by palpating the medial calcaneal region. And we have discomfort by passive ankle first to dorsiflexion. Plantar facades could be bilateral in a 30%. Uh, ultrasound is a good image to uh, make a diagnosis thickening up of four millimeter of the plantar fascia. It has a diagnosis we can find also areas of hypogenicity and this traduces the alteration of the, of the plantar fascia. We can do also X-ray, very important to inform the patient that the score has nothing to do with the, with the pain and it's not correlated with the symptoms. And if we have a prolonged and refractory pain, we should do MRI so that we can detect uh, tumors or other bone pathologies. We, the differential diagnosis is very important so that we are successful 
with our treatment. So we should do differential diagnosis with Achilles tendinopathy, stress fractures, ruptures of the plantar fascia, medial nerve entrapment. If the patient refers dysesthesias in the foot, plantar fibromatosis, this is leather bose disease, tumors, and of course, other systemic diseases like diabetes, rheumatic, autoimmune, vascular and neurologic diseases. And you all know about the conservative treatments we have used before, drugs, instrumental treatments, physical treatments, and new emergen emergency te te techniques like PRP, local injection of botulinum toxin, and the last step should be, of course, surgery. But this was the first important study published in 2006 by the group of Kolbitzer and uh, Ludger Gerdesmeyer. Uh, they proved that focus extracorporal shockwave treatment in plantar facilities has a 50 to 65% of success. This was very important. And the reviews of all meta-analyses concerning rather randomized control trials are positive in relation to pain and functionality. Uh, we can make a good approach with only one session of shockwave therapy, but normally uh, the next uh, slides that I'm going to show you is the comparison between shockwave therapies with other treatments like PRP and conventional treatments. This, uh, are uh, this is a randomized trial showing that there is no great difference between PRP and shockwave treatment in terms of us and of a scale. But if we compare shockwave therapy with injections of botulinum toxin, shockwave therapy is superior to botulinum toxin injection in plantar fasciitis. And in this uh, study from Saxena and also Colvitzer, comparing shockwave to placebo and endoscopic plantar fasciotomy in a group of athletes, of course, shockwave treatment could be preferable since the athlete can remain active during treatment. And to corticoid injection, we all know that corticoid is a good tool, but only short time lasting. So we should uh, use other options. The radial pressure waves are also a good uh, treatment in plantar fasciitis. This is a level of evidence one study from Ludger Gerdesmeyer. He can uh, show that radial pressure therapy improves pain, function, and quality of life compared with a placebo group. And if we compare with other treatments like orthotic treatments or low level laser therapy versus radial pressure waves, we see that all are effective and no superior. It depends which kind of patient are we treating and which are the demands of the patient, and of course, which is the economy of the patient. And radial versus ultrasound significantly is for radial treatment more effective than ultrasound therapy. And versus corticosteroid, as I meant before, a radial therapy has a longer duration of action and no side effect, of course. And if we compare with radial frequency thermal lesioning, uh, we should consider that the uh, shockwave therapy is less invasive than radial radiofrequency thermal lesioning. But uh, the effectiveness of different treatment modalities like PRP prolotherapy, the conclusion is that is, uh, shockwave therapies are effective in the first six months 
but we cannot find great difference among these four treatments in a long follow-up as 36 months follow-up. So the conclusion is shockwave therapy is a good tool, but not in a long-term follow-up. This is the, the studies of level of high level of evidence. And if we compare radial versus focus with uh, function, functional measures, the conclusion from Heinz Lohrer is that focus extracorporeal shock wave therapy may be superior compared to radial pressure wave. And this was also demonstrated by one recently that focus seems to be more effective than the radial pressure waves, always speaking about plantar fasciitis, and that the medium energy group had better success rates. Uh, our recommended protocol for focus uh, shockwave therapy treating plantar fasciitis is one to three treatments, energy flux density between 0.2 to 0.3 millijoules per millimeter square in an interval of one to two weeks, impulses between 1,500 and 2,500 in a frequency between three to five hertz and localization in line ultrasound, off-line ultrasound, or clinical feedback. And for radial uh, pressure wave therapy, uh, from two to five treatments, energy maximum five parts, frequency between six to 10 hertz, and impulses between 2,000 and 3,000 also could be assisted by clinical biofeedback or ultrasound. As uh, predictive uh, factors, we have a positive pre predictive factor if we found edema around the plantar fascia and in the bone, in the calcaneal bone. And uh, the improvement of the cl clinical criteria are related with the decrease in the thickness of plantar fascia. Now we have a new emergency emergency tool, elastography. Elastography evaluation can be useful to monitor the efficacy of the treatment, providing quantitative data for us. And as Dr. Asuncion told us, no complication at all with uh, our shockwave therapy, plantar fasciitis. In this study with 2,493 patients from Rorting, they only reported pain in a minor uh, a number 225 patients and only transient red skin in 247 patients. So we can see that shockwave therapy is likely a safe treatment for plantar fasciitis. So these are our message so that you can take them home. No local anesthesia, persistence of heel spores should be informed to the patient and no strenuous activities during therapy four to six weeks after. Please take care of sports modification. Stretching exercises are very important during treatment and of course after, and we should do a follow-up after one month. So you are all invited to our set of conference also on that Congress, and uh, we are going to, to meet with the research group. This is very important for us. They are opening new fields in shockwave therapy. So thank you very much for your attention.